being fearless because wow. I, this word always this word always comes to me because a lot of times we fail to take the first step because we fear everything of the unknown sometimes that first step it counts a lot and that's why i say when i mean fearless meaning remove the fear from our life and be bold in whatever that you want to do take the first step and be bold hey everyone thanks for joining me on this new podcast with datin maliga welcome datin maliga thank you thank you dano thank you for the time looking forward to the conversation yes me too very much so i just checked all the things you are doing uh, in your business at the moment and it's very impressive you are you are like a coach you, you are helping women to grow their businesses you're working on mindsets you're holding a summit uh, i think in later this year like an uh, international entrepreneur summit so there's a lot of stuff that's going on but i think you're the better person to explain so please let us yes. know what are you doing okay well i i'll start with my women initiative uh devi wealth accelerator um i've launched it I, i'm the founder of um, uh, devi wealth accelerator we launched it last year in august uh, that's basically um it's a business accelerator helping women own businesses to accelerate their business be it in the uh, space of going global be it in the funding space or even um uh, business scaling part of it so mm -hmm. so we when we launched it um so the there's another part that uh, through devi we are actually organizing uh, indo asean startup summit which is a collaboration between malaysia and india and bringing together ASEAN countries into that space of um, expanding startup ecosystem uh, within the region and India being the biggest uh, collaboration part, uh, I would say partner, collaborator in this, uh, it's going to be a massive event. Uh, we are expecting about 1,000 delegates uh, from oh. the region as well as we are looking at um, uh, a lot of investors, almost about 50 over investors we are looking at in attending wow. this, uh, this summit. So it's going to be a, a major event because there's no other event in this scale has taken place in Malaysia, as well mm -hmm. as um, India collaborating with India, this is the first time in the startup space. Mm -hmm. Uh, so wow. that's why we are we are very excited about this event. So it's a very inaugural event for us. And that for sounds event. very exciting. And it's in person, yes. right? It's not some yes, online in meeting. Yes, uh, it's in person. See, thunder strikes <laughs> as we speak. About... <laughs> Even the lightning is still yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> By the way, we are in the same city. We are both in Kuala Lumpur and not so far away from each other, which again is a, quite a coincidence. For, to have a, a, a guest here on my podcast, which is almost a neighbor, yeah. Yes. But but this is a big thing happening in Malaysia, and uh, I, I I'm definitely interested to join myself. Uh, it's it's a huge event Excellent. for entrepreneurs, startups, and investors, and uh, it's it's happening in Sunway Pyramid, right? Yes, it's in uh, Sunway Convention Center. Convention Center, yeah, that's yes. going to be a big one. So and, I'm and why forward. maybe you might ask me why we are doing that is because uh, Puan Sri Susan Chia, the founder of the wife of founder of uh, Sunway Group, is our oh. honorary patron for the event. Oh. So for obvious reasons, we are actually doing it in uh, Sunway Convention Center. Yeah. But how do the? I mean, how do you organize an event of this scale? I mean, you have to be connected with thousands of people to make this happen, right? I mean, an event with 1,000 guests to bring them all together in one place. I mean, I can only imagine like how much work and, and how much oh, yes. outreach <laughs> and communication. And, and it cannot be just you, right? I mean, there must be a huge team behind this. Yes, 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 absolutely. Um, we have a big team, actually. Um, uh, there are three organizing parties involved. Uh, 
local entities as well as a technology arm partner that is involved. So we have an organizing team of over 25 people who have come together to wow. organize this team who believe in the mission and who believe in the in the in the work that we are doing. So they've all come together being part of it and then really mm -hmm. accelerating the event itself. So mm -hmm. it is beautiful mm -hmm. the way the team has formed and then mm -hmm. being part of it. Yes, we have a big team working on this. And of yes, course, I... <clears throat> I will share with you more later on how yeah. this whole thing came about. I was about to ask, was this your idea? <laughs> well, uh, yes, in, in, in some, wow. some ways, uh, yes. Um, I actually met up with the Indian High Commissioner in uh, February this year uh, mm -hmm. for a meeting to, to, to brainstorm on how Malaysian women can work with Indian entities or Indian organization, which is founded by women in India. Mm -hmm. So that was mm -hmm. the brainstorming session we had. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. during that brainstorm, brainstorming session, uh, one of the things that uh, the Indian High Commissioner did express is, you know, one of the areas that we can actually collaborate is on the startup uh, mm -hmm. ecosystem. And he mm -hmm. brought that idea. Um, mm -hmm. And then what what happened is um, we took that idea as a group. We took that idea. We expanded that idea and say, you know what? And we realized this has never been done before. So it is something that is new because most of the time, if you look at the Malaysian startup events, it's always been within the country or within mm -hmm. certain organization, but it has never been done internationally. So mm -hmm. we thought this might be a very good uh, time and, you know, um, uh, required, I would say it's a needed um, event that needs to happen for startups in Malaysia to collaborate and partner with other entities from outside of Malaysia. And India mm -hmm. being one of the giants in Asia, which is, mm -hmm. you know, they are expanding tremendously. So much of opportunities are there. We felt this is a timely event that needs to happen. And collaboration with India, it is such a, you know, um, it's a sure thing. So we actually expanded on this and then we presented to the Indian High Commission and they loved it. They say, okay, let's go with this. Then now we are where we are, you know, we are talking to Malaysian agencies, government. We've invited the PM, our prime minister. We have invited a couple of ministries, minister of Mosi, who is the body or the ministry for startups in Malaysia. They are the one who are the lawmakers or mm. the, 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 the agency that actually comes up with the startup blueprint in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So we have mm -hmm. invited, we have presented to them. They are also, you know, they are also keen to come on board. We, I think mm -hmm. next couple of weeks, we will be presenting to a few other agencies, uh, government mm -hmm. agencies to collaborate with them. And, you know, mm -hmm. because we are bringing in almost more than 100 million investment into Malaysia through these oh. investments that we are going to bring in. So it's going to be a massive event and massive uh, generation of funds uh, for the startups as well as, you know, other areas that we are looking at. So that's why it is a, you know, a mega event uh, with, mm -hmm. the, with the delegation and, you know, startups are always looking for funding. They are always looking mm -hmm. for ideas and they are always mm -hmm. looking for stage to present their ideas and we are providing mm -hmm. internationally. Oh, yeah. Wow. So there's a win, 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 win situation here. I mean, the, the startups are winning. The investors are winning. Malaysia as a country is winning because, you know, you're bringing all this capital into the country. Uh, and so, yeah, it's you're creating a, a huge amount of opportunity. So I have a lot yes. of respect for that. Thank and you. Uh, I'm looking forward. I, I will definitely be there. And uh, thank you. I will put I will put that on my calendar for sure. I mean, I didn't know about this event, so you see. Okay. <laughs> having this podcast brings so many incredible insights, and I'm very thank thankful for your sharing. Thank you. And I'm also very curious to meet the young girl that in Maliga who was, <laughs> you know which uh, I warned you about this uh, journey before. So we're going to do a bit of time travel. And I mean, since we understand what you're doing today, I'm even more curious to learn 
how did this person come about and how from let's say when you were 10 years old what were you doing where were you at what was going on in your in your mind what were your dreams yeah <laughs> taking me <laughs> um i come from a very humble background um I, I I don't know whether you know the term of estate. Estate is basically a plantation uh, mm-hmm. in um, yeah. in Perak. Um, so okay. I I am yeah. the Perak the is a product, state in Malaysia. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I am a product of uh, two um, immigrants who came from India, um, mm-hmm. and uh, they were rubber tappers in uh, in mm-hmm. Perak uh, mm-hmm. in a remote uh, plantation. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm a product of that, and um, and uh, yeah, at 10 years old, um, I was very lonely because my mom, uh, being an immigrant, used to work four jobs at a time. Four um, jobs. Yes, four jobs at a time to put food on the table and to make sure that her kids are educated. Um, so I, I I'm very used to seeing her working all the time, even day and night. Uh, she goes to rubber tapping in the morning, then she comes back, she cooks for us, and then again, she will do some part-time jobs, and then she will go and make bre- uh, In the night, she used to prepare breakfast for the next day, and and I used to, before going to school in the school bus, I used to take those breakfasts um, uh, uh, that she has prepared to the shop to sell it in the shop, and then I go to school. So, so that was the kind of, uh, um, uh, you know, childhood that I've had. So my mother, seeing that in my mother, it, it, you know, it actually developed a lot of entrepreneurial and the hunger in me to do more uh, mm-hmm. in my life. Um, and I would say that is where the real journey started for me. And, that and is amazing. Yeah. why I am actually very passionate about helping women is also because of that. Because for me, because she didn't mm-hmm. have any family here in Malaysia, all her family were mm-hmm. in India. And, mm-hmm. and she, you know, she, she really worked hard to put, you know, to put her kids through education. And for me, that was the driver in terms of helping more women. Uh, because I felt if she had the, the 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 support of you know a community or even a support from people to help her uh, in terms of growing her business, even setting up a very small micro business, but she was doing it herself. But if there was any other support for her to grow that business, I think she would have really done big things in her life. But she did what she knew, and she did for her children. So for mm-hmm. me, that was a driver, and I wanted to help more women to expand their business and also, mm-hmm. you know, to uplift their family. And that was mm-hmm. the biggest driver for me to help more women. Yeah. There we go. We discovered already like the core yeah. of your desire and of your and of your passion to do what you're doing today. I mean, it makes so much sense. You know, if you're yeah. watching your mother suffer day in day out, and I mean, work so hard. Of course, you want to make a difference in your life and, and not just for yourself, but yeah, as you said, also for other women. So that, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And then so now the, the seed was planted in your head and in your heart. So how did you go about growing it? Um, I would say, it, I mean, it started then. Then, you know, life happens. You know, you forget about it. And then, you know, I, I was in the corporate world. I, you know, and then I started into a business in 1999 uh, when I got married, you know, um, and I started the business with my husband. And then again, I went back to corporate, failed a couple of businesses, you know. Uh, and then again, you know, once you start a journey of being an entrepreneur, going back to corporate, yes, for a little bit, but you always have this, you know, in a voice Your saying, that, hey, I need to start something else, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Know. So, uh, you yeah, know, a yeah. couple of times going back and forth on that, you know, until um, 2015, I started another business, you know? So I've always been in the entrepreneurial journey, regardless whether I was in the corporate or not. 
So in 2018, this is where the real change started happening, uh, where, you know, someone came and told me uh, in my life saying that I needed to do more in, in, you know, in contributing to the community. And that's how, uh, you know, I had to tie it back to my, the inner child dream and the vision of helping more women. That's how it is actually connected. And I mm -hmm. felt that there was a timely, um, uh, uh, timely reminder for me to start where I wanted to real do, uh, re really achieve the purpose that I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So that actually started in 2018, um, mm -hmm. where we had an in inaugural um, uh, launch of uh, Malaysia World Chamber of Commerce. That time I was actually um, helping to put together a women empowerment chamber. I was one of the co-founders, and mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, we had uh, uh, Tun City Dr. Hasma uh, Tun ha uh, City uh, Dr. City Hasma. Uh, <laughs> I can't even remember her name now. It's oh, fine. It's she, fine. These names. She uh, actually inaugurated. She inaugurated our event, um, and mm -hmm. it was about four hundred women who came together. We had a delegation from Bangladesh. Uh, about 20 and uh, wow i can hear the <laughs> yeah, the storm at the one, back yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so we weather. had uh, about 25 women came for that event and then we launched a uh, women empowerment uh, uh uh what do you call it initiative at that time mm -hmm. um and we were covered in the news you know and we actually gave a a, a title to uh uh, Tumsiti Asma saying that she is the mother of the nation. So if you find it oh. in YouTube, you still will find that video there. Mm -hmm. um, so she inaugurated it. And then, you know, uh, I was supposed to do another event in 2020, um, where in 2019, I traveled quite a bit all over the world, actually. Um, oh. I went to Bahrain, Middle East. I went to Sri Lanka, India. Indonesia, you know, connecting with a lot of Bangladesh, uh, connecting with a lot of women organization. Uh, because for me, uh, I realize women need to start working with each other more, not just within the country, but outside the country as well, because there's so much of opportunities if we come together. Can you imagine 50% of the population in the world are women? Can you imagine if... <laughs> If yeah. we start working with each other, even at a 10% yeah. higher than what it is right now, the economy of a country can just, you know, exponentially grow. So yeah. my aim was to create that kind of a platform for women to start work together at an international level rather than just mm -hmm. looking at their home ground as their playing field. For me, I always look at the world is our canvas we can yeah. define it the way we want it to be. So that was the intention. Um, so in 2020, I started a pro, uh, you know, I started this event. Um, I founded uh, 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 an organization called World Women Forum. Um, mm -hmm. That is basically to bring all these uh, about 15 different countries together under one platform and start engaging with that, each other, doing business with each other, trading with each other, and at the same time, bringing in investment for these kind of companies, uh, women-owned businesses. So if you if you check out World Women Forum, Forum that's my okay. site, and that's the uh, uh, entity that I founded Amazing. for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what happened after that pandemic happened? So that event was supposed to be April 2020, and uh -oh. when the pandemic <laughs> happened. <laughs> So I had to shelve it and, um, and uh, you know, I was actually trying to figure out, um, you know, how do I take this forward? And uh, instead of, um, just a minute, um, instead of, uh, you know, instead of, uh, you know, putting it uh, at a back burner, I was actually waiting. Okay, how do I take this to the next level? So um, in 2020 or in 2021, I got into a clubhouse 
and uh, in clubhouse you know everybody was getting on oh. because during the pandemic yeah, you know, this clubhouse app yeah yeah this clubhouse exactly, thing, yeah, yeah. clubhouse app um mm -hmm. so you know i got on to it you know to connect with more women particularly mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. and uh, you know get the engagement going because once we connect that's where we can take it to the next level so i mm -hmm. went on board you know connected with a lot of women from different parts of the world i think clubhouse was a great app was very timely for everyone to be connected um mm -hmm. so i met a lot of good people but i also met my current partner there in clubhouse what yeah i didn't know it was a dating app <laughs> <laughs> no 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 partner meaning my business partner yeah oh oh i see <laughs> my yes. life partner yeah. oh, okay your business partner i see okay. my sorry business partner, <laughs> well, you know clubhouse could be a dating app as well because it i see be. so many dating yeah. rooms there yeah 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 so um uh so yeah i met my partner there uh dr aziza jalaluddin and mm -hmm. uh so uh, we were talking about because she's also very much into um women empowerment you know how do we bring all the women together you know so we we discussed this you know and i i i also felt doing what i'm doing through an ngo will not make sense on the long run it's not sustainable uh, because a lot of it is through volunteerism and uh, you know i think the pandemic taught me that that i needed mm -hmm. an entity where it could be a sustainable business model over a period mm -hmm. of time where women mm -hmm. can come together have an ownership in the entity at the same time working together and yeah. um, and in 2021 we met and then in 2022 we decided to form Devi Wealth Accelerator Sundariyam mm. Barman so it is a a profit oriented in, uh, entity but for women so any mm. women can come in and take an ownership or a share in the company mm. and be part mm. of Devi so mm -hmm. that is the entity that we have built and through that mm -hmm. entity we are doing amazing things um and one of it is indo asean startup summit uh but oh. we are also we are also doing um i think by this year we will be opening up davy uh wealth accelerator in india i was in oh. delhi two <clears throat> weeks ago and presented to a group of women uh, women entrepreneurs, and they were so impressed with Davy. Uh, we found a partner who will be mm. uh, establishing Davy in India, and uh, similarly, we will be also looking at establishing Davy in Indonesia because we found another partner who is so mm. impressed with what Davy is doing, what it stands for, how we are building the community of women. Uh, they are so impressed with it. Um, so we'll be forming Indonesia soon as well. So yeah, so that's how wow. they were born. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so you have a lot on your plate. Huh? You're expanding yes. to India, to Indonesia. I mean, yes. uh, this is just like 10% of the world population, I guess, or me more than that, I guess. I think it's yes, more, more than, than that. Yeah, I, mean, I think we'll be closer to yeah. 25, maybe. So, I mean, yeah, you're, you're talking about 270 million in Indonesia, and you're yeah, looking yeah. at more than a billion in uh, India. Yeah. So, so yeah. wow, that is a lot of people. And you're bringing <laughs> all these ladies together, and they all can like become shareholders in your company. Yes. Yes, that, yes. That yes, sounds yes. like the, the building of an empire right there. <laughs> eventually, yes, that is the aim. Yeah, cool. And eventually we are looking at in five years to list Davy. Oh, you want to go public? Yeah, yeah. And that's not a problem at all. Well, not a problem then at all. congratulations now Thank already you. because uh, that's going to be a, a big influx of cash and investment well cash is so. one thing cash is one thing but i think it's about building the community that's what we believe mm -hmm. in uh it's mm -hmm. a common cause for everyone but at the mm -hmm. same time um you know uh we we are also looking at raising funds we are also looking at helping uh, women businesses to go 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 global mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. by going global uh you know it is a, a conscious 
um, uh, what do you call it? Conscious capitalism. Mm -hmm. That's what we mm -hmm. call it. So, um, mm -hmm. so it's about helping the community to grow. So with mm -hmm. the community, mm -hmm. Devi grows and the community grows. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. the idea. Okay. Yeah. That sounds very fascinating. And uh, just to understand the details. So let's say, uh, let's pretend I'm a woman and I have a little shop, you know, I don't know, I'm, I'm doing clothing or whatever. And I want to join Davy. So how does it work? Do I do I have to kind of? Is there like a membership fee or how? how does no, it work? it's it's a, it's a, it's not a membership. It's actually as long as we we help women SMEs. So that means when we are accelerating companies, they must have be they must be in the quadrant of SMEs. And the criteria that we look for is at least five years in the business. Mm -hmm. or they must be at least earning 1 million revenue in a year that's our criteria Ringgit. because we don't want to go into startup space mm -hmm. because um to accelerate a business we want to have a sustainable model that means yeah, if yeah. the person have gone through five years it shows the person have sustained some challenges and have yeah. gone through it through some sort mm -hmm. of a, a stage mm -hmm. Uh, okay. and uh, and we want to help them because a lot of times these micro businesses and these um, uh, you know uh, startups they have a lot of funding given by the government but oh. if you really look at the SME space not much of funding is available most of the funding mm -hmm. that is available is debt funding or mm -hmm. it's a bank that is giving them mm -hmm. loans or it's a project mm -hmm. financing is given by the mm -hmm. loan uh, by the banks mm -hmm. or that funding is given by the okay. uh, agencies. So here, mm -hmm. what we want to do is we want to determine this company if it is right to expand. Um, that's where the, our acceleration model comes in. We accelerate them based on the three criteria, criteria is which is educate, um, you know, network and funding. So these are the areas that we actually help SMEs to oh. grow. So you so also coach them, so you give them kind of a consultancy. Exactly. You, you yes. come in as a as a business consultant, and you can kind of tell them what they could improve, I guess. Yes. And then and then you create connections for them. And, yeah. And if and if the problem is funding, then you can also help them with some loans or. Not yeah, loans. So. I would say uh, through equity funding. Equity funding. And we so we also teach them there are because there are. There are ways of raising funds and, uh, you know, uh, loans is the conventional way of doing it, but there are other ways of raising funds. And this is where our, our, our expertise comes in. And because we are so well networked in, in different parts of the world, this is where our expertise comes in, in terms of, uh, creating that kind of partnership and collaboration for companies intending to expand. And at the same time, we look at through coaches and mentors, we look at the business model of that entity. Are they scalable? Because sometimes they want to expand, but is the business ready to scale up? Is the business, uh, uh, what do you call it? Organization structure mm -hmm. uh, supports that scaling. So this yeah, is yeah. where we come in and we actually help them to restructure, okay. to look at the business model, we look at the network to expansion, and we look at what is needed for them to expand. Uh, when if it is needed Amazing. with funding, then we help them with the way of structuring the funding as well. Yeah. So, so you're actually a like a business accelerator. Uh, yeah. Exactly. We are a business accelerator. Now, well, I feel a bit left out now, I must say, because <laughs> I'm not a woman. So, so to which extent do you accept males in your, in, in your organization? I mean, can they join some, to some extent or are they just like stay? Well, away? you know, if, if you're a male, if you must have a, a wife, you must have a sister or you have a, <laughs> someone, some female partner you have. Mm, so we okay. are happy to bring someone on board as long as it's, it's, you know, in partnership with a female because, and oh, okay. that's where we take pride. I mean, I would say pride, but at the same time, we are very clear on our goals um, where it is because Davy is owned by female founding members. Mm -hmm. So the shareholders who come on board 
are female founders. And uh, yeah. so purely to keep that as a as a as a as a uh, that entity, so we mm -hmm. invite the female founders to come on board. But that doesn't mean that uh, we don't have within our circle we don't have male uh, counterparts because mm -hmm. we feel. I mean, it's not just me, but I strongly think that uh, behind every woman there is a man as well. And and we need that perspective from a male counterpart to for us to grow as well. So we have many of our supporters, our senior advisor, the key person in our organization is a male. He's actually um, uh, there you go. Dr. Sri Devamani. He is the uh, former deputy minister in prime minister's office. So he okay. is our senior advisor in Delhi. And we have also uh, Dr. Sri Asman Ujang, who is the um, ex-chairman of Pranama. So these are some of the uh, advisory, uh, advisory team that we have under Davy. So definitely uh, men are part of our system, but purely okay. because to keep it as women-founded entity, uh, mm -hmm. we bring in only female shareholders into Davy. But there are many wow. supporting yeah. those companies. Okay. Well. So yes. men are not completely excluded, but uh, yes. but yeah, it is is about. I understand them. So it's yeah. uh, and it makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. so uh, yeah. women are like in the center of attention here, and I think they deserve to be. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah. I see. I, I've learned so much today. I had no idea this is happening, uh, <laughs> even you know not so far from here, and you're having this incredible event coming up. So. Um, I'm really looking forward, and uh, I will be happy to support. Thank uh, you. Uh, I'm very happy to having to, to for you to be here on my podcast and to share all these incredible insights. And I would Thank like you. to invite you to share your final words of wisdom, the things that you would like our audience to hear, and maybe the ladies who are you know struggling to get their business going. What uh, what kind of advice would you give them? I, for me, it is um, being fearless because wow. I, this word always, this word always comes to me because a lot of times we fail to take the first step because we fear everything of the unknown. Sometimes that first step it counts a lot, and that's where I say when I mean fearless, meaning remove the fear from our life and be bold in whatever that you want to do take the first step and be bold and because the moment you take the first step it is a, a completely a new world and you know and there will always be risk and challenges so what you know let's face it and move on you know because life is to be lived for me, that's what matters the most. Life is to be lived, and if you don't live it to the fullest, there will always be regret. Um, so for aspiring women who are struggling, look to your right, to, to your left, and there will always be someone there to say, hey, I'm here to help you. What do you need? So don't feel um, uh, the fear of asking. Ask for help when you need the most ask for help from your you know from the people that you trust the most and they will be there uh, i think a lot of times you know i've been in that journey self doubt is the biggest enemy to success so ask for help when you need it and be fearless that would be my advice <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing that was very very inspiring Thank you so much for sharing this Thank advice, Dati Maliga, and I'm, I'm sure that a lot of ladies listening to this will, uh, will take away a lot of uh, lessons and inspiration. And of course, they can also reach out to you and actually join your organization. That's why yes. we will definitely include any necessary links below the video in the description so uh, people can reach out to you and, and uh, your organization can grow. and. I really wish you all the best with it. It seems such a noble cause that you are following here, inspired Thank by the 10-year-old girl who saw her mom suffering. So, I mean, it's really, it's, uh, it touches my heart, your story. And uh, 
I wish you all the best and thank you for being here with thank me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, you know, I'm always happy to share my stories. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Thank you.